Space Shuttle Atlantis prepares to come home. Its crew has spent the last 12 days assembling the International Space Station. Then something happens that no one expects. The day before um, the shuttle returns uh, back to Earth, the commander reports kind of sighting something that he's not seen before. There's some kind of um, reflective uh, structure. Mission Control asks Commander Brent Jett to describe what he sees. Uh, a structure that's uh, definitely not rigid or uh, it's not a, uh, a you know, solid metal structure. It doesn't look like anything I've ever seen on the uh, outside of the shuttle, uh, that's for sure. Mission Control take remote control of the payload bay camera. That's when things start to really get interesting. Okay, we're seeing three or four objects. No, there are, uh, there are three objects. Strangely enough, at that point, you have multiple objects, three, you know, two more that join in and uh, essentially form some sort of triangular formation. For 20 minutes, Atlantis tracks the flashing lights across the sky, beaming images back to mission control. They're going over the video that you guys sent down. Video is looked at right away, and engineers jump on it right away. Find out what it is. When news of the sightings reaches the media, it causes a sensation. Everyone's buzzing about these three objects that were seen. We're awash with stories about unexplained craft, but when you get these from astronauts, you pay a little bit more attention. In the lore of what are termed unidentified flying objects, one of the most iconic shapes in all of that is the triangle, so this fits the bill. Based on the way the objects are moving, NASA assumes this is space debris reflecting the sunlight. You are flying through a vacuum, so things that are out in space will generally tend to hang out together. Having three objects, you always have a triangle. But not everyone agrees with the official explanation. NASA's uh, explanation of space junk to me is just, uh, you know, just ridiculous. They should be able to recognize what space junks are. These guys are astronauts, okay? Um, they're trained for this. But NASA really does suspect they're tracking space junk, and they're worried. Because three years earlier, shuttle debris brought down the shuttle Columbia. Following what occurred on STS-107 uh, when we lost the Columbia, uh, NASA uh, is very uh, interested in tracking virtually every piece of debris. NASA fears the Atlantis is seeing a critical piece of its hardware that's broken off. In Mission Control, we really want to get pictures like this of anything floating nearby any shuttle, especially if it appears to have come off the shuttle. This kind of warning that was missed in 2003 are the warnings you want to get every time, and you want to find them out, you want to see them, you want to report them, and you want to react to them. Unsure what these unidentified objects are, NASA doesn't take any chances. They've decided that based on this object that we saw, that we're going to wave off tomorrow, so our next deorbit opportunity is going to be on flight day uh, 13. Atlantis, we copy. NASA delays the landing so they can check that Atlantis has not been compromised. This is Mission Control Houston from during this survey to confirm the integrity of Atlantis's heat shield. In this case, it looks like it's more likely to be an incidental object broken free accidentally from the shuttle. And I believe that's in the end the NASA decision. One day after first sighting the mysterious flashing lights, STS-115 is finally clear to land. 